All right, just before New Year's Day, I made a video standing here, which is going to be eventually where we build a shed. Now, sorry, it's very windy here. I am wearing a wireless mic and I hope it's helping. It's a lovely dry day. We had a couple of dry days and then we had two real wet days, which kind of turned the thing backwards. But we have a longer day now and the hope is that we'll start to soon soak up and we get some jobs done out in the field. But before we go near the field, one job that I want to tackle is right here where we stand. And I did make a video on this place just before New Year's, I think, about a future project that we want to do here. And that is we want to build a machinery shed slash calf shed probably down the lane. It will turn from a machinery shed into a calf shed. And um, when we get the other machinery shed done, we're going to gravel out, clean up this whole area because it's a bit of an eyesore and it's waste ground, it's not doing anything. The scale is to get something up here this year um, or at least get it well started that we can get some sort of a frame up and turn this into a usable area. It definitely will be a great spot for a calf shed. It's right beside the milking parlor door, which is only just behind me. So we fit to come out to feed cows just dead on here. And it would howl a lot of cows that we should be able to get at least 20 to 30 cows in there if we need it. But 20 is enough for us. This hedge, um, it's a long time up, so it is. It does have to come out because we need to get access to this place. And the access is straight through there up onto the parent street. So this is not going to be an easy job. And as well as that, it's a hell of a thick hedge. Very hard to show you on camera, but you'll see it when I start to saw into it how thick it is. My mother would be glad to see it gone as well because it will open up a bit of a view for her to see out down across the lands here behind us. Now, before someone asks, Adrian, would you not just get a digger in to do it? It's extremely wet. We wanted to get this out late on last year, believe it or not. The weather wouldn't let us either, so it was just soaking wet and I don't want to tear the whole garden apart and it's sobbing wet and destroy the street and then there's nowhere to go with it either. We can't go into any fields at the minute. So it is the 20th of February now. We're getting close to nesting season. We're going to touch this hedge. We need to do it now. We need to get it on the ground. And eventually I'll figure out whether I'm going to pull it up onto the street one by one, load it into a trailer, or wait then for about a month or so till the ground dries up. And then Jerry can take away all the debris and stuff. So I have my chainsaw and stuff all sharpened up, serviced, ready to rock. Let's tear into it. <laughs> All right, so I hope you can hear me because I haven't got the mic on. You wouldn't wear a mic at a job like this or you'd end up getting wrecked or lost in the middle of that heap of stuff. But you can just see how thick that hedge is. Or can you with the sun? Hopefully you can see it. But yeah, it's a thick old hedge that. You nearly have two rows of Lelandia, whatever you call that stuff, growing side by side. So it has kind of branched out at the bottom. And that particular trunk there has one, two, three, four, five, six big limbs growing out of it. So, so that's what's kind of left this hedge shocking wide. I lost an hour and a half there because of those blue skies now. We're after having a hell of a amount of rain there for the last hour and a half. Hailstones and rain. So everything's sobbing wet now, which is not going to make the job any more pleasing to do. But we're not going to let the rain put us off. It's a job I need to get done. So I'm going to keep plowing at it. Um, I found a basketball over here. I'm very surprised that it still has air in it. It's well perished, but it's still pumped. 
and that basketball could be up there 15 years plus and I wouldn't even say it was mine it was probably someone that came around to the house and I doubt they want it back I have a nice hole made there. I have the mic fitted now, so hopefully it'll block out the bit of wind. The sun is directly in your eyes, so I hope you're fit to see something because it doesn't look great on the camera screen here. But this post here, right in the middle of the hedge, it's a long time since that post was ever seen. But we used to have a load of these concrete posts. Um, my dad probably put them in in the 70s, probably late 70s. And it used to come the whole way up along here before there was any um, hedge here. There actually used to be I can just barely remember it, but there used to be big trees here, a couple of big trees that fell over, and this is kind of the last one that remains. Um, my mother planted this hedge here. It isn't in great shape on the bottom. It's still alive. The frost of 2010 gave it an awful doing, um, but it is recovering. I just have to remove some of the ivy that's coming back on it again. This garden used to be completely surrounded with concrete posts all around and the whole way down the lane. There still is loads of them on the lane. If you're a follower of our channel for a few years now, you probably would have noticed the white posts come down the lane. They're the last ones that remain. Um, and they are going to stay there. My dad put them in. I have no intentions of ever touching them. But this one here, it will have to come out. And um, it's the last one that remains. But we'll try to get out without breaking it. And we put it somewhere else. We have a big hole made here now. And it's a long time. Well, it's probably the first of my lifetime I've ever been fit to see straight through here. And we do have a hell of a mountain of stuff <laughs> built up here. And there's a lot more to go on it yet. A lot of old tick stuff still in there. But there is a reason why I chose to put it there. So we're up here on my parents' street and this is the far side of this bush pile. And the reason why I put it there is the garden is so wet at the moment and it's probably going to take a long, long time for that garden to dry out. It can come from the street here with the tractor, clench down with the front loader, probably with the grab or something like that, and pick them up and just drop them into the trailer without having to go into the garden. It'd be tucked away and just stack somewhere you can't bone this kind of stuff any longer, Eamon Ryan said no. So maybe we'll get in a chip or a shredder or something like that, or we'll just stack it somewhere that rot away. Uh, this fence here is in a long time as well. I think I put it in when I was about 16 or 17 years old. And as you can see, it's showing all the signs of it. It's rotten. That fence is completely rotten. So that fence is coming out. I never thought it was a great job because it always stopped you from actually going into the garden. It's kind of an obstacle you had to go around. So I won't be putting any fence back there. I'll curb it. And I will make a drive straight down here just the width of a tractor, straight down where the shed will be and a bit of a yard in front. Then I will reopen this side here as a place to sit, just basically so my parents can actually come out when the weather's good and have a nice place to squat and sit down and without having to go in and out of a fence, around a fence, a place you can just walk straight out, sit down and enjoy some good weather if we ever do get it. So that's kind of the plan. It will look rough for a while, but I have a plan in my head and it will look nice when it's done. And um, this hedge here, the bottom of it's all tore out of it. The dogs love running from my house up here underneath the hedge. So my plan with that is to actually put a panel fence tight up against that hedge 
the whole way down and to bring that panel fence slightly over in this corner as well kind of act as a shelter and put a seating area somewhere around here just build this up and put a nice seating area here where again as I said my parents can come down and enjoy sitting out so before I tear on into this I just want to kind of give you an idea now when I have it opened of what I'm actually talking about I give a brief description the last time but if you look here now where we stand back you have a nice area here there's a nice wide area here and my intention is to come along and extend this house out and um, as far as we possibly can and bring it across there probably to that toward pillar that's over there so that we have the same profile as this house but we'd also fit to close it down a bit the shed will face into the east so it'll be a warm enough shed but we will probably have to close it down in the front eventually but we don't get an awful lot of wind from the east so it tends to cause very little problems for us uh, over here behind our scrap heap um, is the backside of our one of our calf houses it used to be our calving pen that i built many a year ago but my intention is to extend that and bring that shed along eventually as well right up in line with this one and this will create a nice big calf shed um, and then we'll be fit to open a door through there into the new shed when it's built to actually bring older calves in here and have it as an open house make life much easier for us to be far less bedding far less work involved cleaning out all the time in the smaller hutches and that is kind of what i'm thinking you're welcome to put in your thoughts and i probably will make changes as i go along and um, but that is the general run of it uh kind of have an effort in the suit that one person can do a lot of the work that's my whole motto but for now that's not a very pretty wall it's one i built and i didn't plaster it i don't like plastering i've just no time for plastering i love building but not plastering but i will get it plastered and capped and we will have to make an access coming through here as well that will fit to come from there out to this shed if we are feeding calves or whatever we have a quick access out there or up above we'll choose which one works the best my father shouted out the window don't throw away my good sticks keep as many of them as you can so i'm holding on to them but that stuff is a shocking bad borner but look at that there he can't complain now and there'll be plenty more to go on top of it now in a few minutes and this area here i have plans to put in some sort of a water tank here that can make room and may have to move that compressor and put it higher up there just out of the way so i can mount a large water tank just right about that area there and just store some water there for washing down the milk and parlor and a few jobs like that that'd be an ideal area for it unfortunately this is going to have to be removed that i don't like doing um, farmer peel kill me because i can't remember the name of it geranium no someone tell me the name of it please That's all the branches gone that's the heavy bit of the lifting done now, as you can see there's a big dip there i don't even know why that dip is there it's dry there's nothing in there it's as dry as a pancake my dad told me when he came here first and bought this farm originally there was actually horses in the home house it was an old house that house could be 150 plus years old mud wall house but when he came here he said this garden well, it wasn't really here. It was just a dumping ground. That's all it was. It was a horrid, messy place. So he said he looked around the fields and that to secretly find good, dry, sandy soil, which he did on top of one of the hills behind our house there, which we call our sand pit hill as a result of him finding that sand. So he took into it with a pick and shovel, horse and cart, and drew it down here and started filling this up. He reckons he could have put up a 10 feet of stuff here, but he was halfway through it and he said he was just fed up. It was taking too long and that's when he decided to buy his first tractor which was the t20 the diesel 20. we talked about it one day and we think it was a place there there's iron works there beside a petrol station in king's court but there used to be a, a fellow there that sold tractors maybe someone knows that area can remember but he thinks that's where he bought his 20 he's practically 99.9 .9 sure that's where it came from and he bought it and got a little transport box and brought it down on it and he said it was such an upgrade it was just like luxury compared to having to Put fuel on a horse and that's when the tractor came this was the first job that i'd actually done filling up this old garden so that's a bit of history for you and now 
I'm going to put my stamp on it and hopefully do something decent with it and make it look a lot better. So I'm actually down here in my own garden and just want to show you a hedge, a good hedge versus, well, a quite a poor hedge. But we have a couple of different varieties here and I've tried different ones, ones that have worked, ones that haven't. And I can say uh, the one above is your golden Lelandi, not a fan of it. A lot of them about in Ireland and wouldn't be my favourite now. Then below here you have a laurel hedge. A lot of maintenance to the laurels, they grow quite fast and they can get away from you quite easy. So yeah, you have to cut this one nearly twice a year to keep it on the control. But a good hedge, um, slow grower for the first couple of years and then when it gets going, it grows quite fast. I planted that hedge in 2008 um, and then this one here was all laurel as well. The unfortunate thing was around that time we had a outbreak of rabbits. And I mean a plague of rabbits. They had the tops of our hills and everything grazed like cows. They were a nightmare. And when we had the laurels first planted, the rabbits would come down and they would eat a ring, just a little ring around the bottom of all the little laurels that we planted and that would kill them instantly. I almost thought they were doing it a badness. Tried several things to put them off, but I found then the best thing that did work was actually I cut a heap of fencing posts, small pencil posts, about two foot long. I drove them into the ground and I put two row of electric wire just about a foot, maybe 16 inches off the ground, both sides of the hedge, the whole way around, and I kept them out. I'm sure there was a few squeals in the middle of the night, but that did keep them out. We had to plant this hedge, and it's a long hedge, this, but we had to plant it a second time because the first one was annihilated by them little buggers. Uh, the one at the back here then was a wetter kind of a spot, and which the laurels didn't particularly like, and they struggled, really did struggle. A lot of them started to die, and I was replacing a few, and I just got fed up. So I took it back out again. It was only in about two or three years. It wasn't hard to pull out. Um, and I put in good drainage behind this hedge that you see here. And I got this hedge, which I have to say I absolutely love. This is actually Western Red Cedar. Um, a guy in the garden centre highly recommended and he had a hedge in himself that was just exactly like this one here and fell in love with it. And I'm really happy I put it in because it grew really, really fast. This hedge is about 10 to 12 years in. I like the fact that it grows right down tight to the bottom as well. Kind of a hedge that would give you a hell of a shelter. And I just thought I'd share it with you. It's in my own garden and I do like a bit of garden when I get time on the Sundays. Haven't done it in a while, but I used to actually enjoy it. Maybe it's just a period I was going through. Uh, certainly don't do it as much now, but yeah, just wanted to show you the difference in hedges and that's a hedge I would highly recommend. I like it. And then you have this thing here, which is, I think, boxwood and not worth talking about. Alright, I have the mic on again because it's actually got windy there this evening, so it has. But anyway, with a little bit of help of the girls at the very end there, that is it. That's the hedge gone. I'm not worried about them stumps. There's lots of old stones and stuff laying around the base of them. So I'm not going to take the edge of me saw, which actually I did do with the small saw. That's why it was blunt, cutting the last few pieces, so I took the big one out and just finished it. It's unreal the way it opens up an area. Much, much brighter. Now it does look messy now, there's no doubt about it. But I promise you, it'll look a lot better when I'm finished. I know in my head the way it's going to finish out and it'll be a lot better use of space than an area there which we're spraying it round up constantly trying to keep the weeds off it. So it's just a wasted area 
but it'll be wasted no more. So the next step here will be getting Jerry in. And Jerry come along then with the digger, probably a mini digger to do this, because there's not a massive amount of work to be done. But he'll raise this hollow that sits here, fill up that hole. It's only an old dry hole, it's probably there before I was born. I don't know what the reason of it was. And Dad's in the house there, I'm not gonna bother asking him. Fill that whole hollow up, put a couple of load of gravel on that just to fill the whole thing up. Then gravel this whole area here, put a bit of 804 on top of it. Just leave it nice and tidy. And that'll probably happen sometime, hopefully in the next few weeks when the weather does properly dry out and ground is accessible and we can draw some stuff away if we need to. And then finally, we'll take this concrete post out and we'll get it a new home somewhere. We won't break it. We'll dig it out with the digger, get right underneath and lift it out. Cause it's the last of them concrete posts that was put in around this whole area and dad put them in and I'll put it in somewhere else cause it's still a fairly decent post. But that's it, job is complete. I'm gonna be starting first thing tomorrow morning, going around all my paddocks and fixing up all the electric fences, repairing posts. Just going around the entire farm, emptying drinkers as well because we do have badgers, a lot of badgers, quite a few actually, um, on top of our hill, just above our house here. And there's a chance they've been drinking out of the drinkers. So that's why we always go around and empty out all the drinkers, clean them out, flush them out and refill them again. So that'll be a day's walk, two days walk tomorrow and the next day. We've a lot of trees also down here and there across the fields as well, I've noticed. And some of them are uprooted and just hanging across the fields, big ones. So we'll have to have a look at all those. So there's quite a bit of tidying to do. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, St. Patrick's Day or shortly after, we might get cows out into fields and that would be brilliant. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. See you next one.